Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. So today is break day. Now I've already taken off the passenger side rotors and calipers, the original ones and the lines, and we've got them all down here. Now I've laid it out like this just so we can sort of keep track of what we're weighing, what we're measuring, etc. I have bolted the other rotors onto the car. Now these are not on forever. I really just wanted to check hub clearances. And then I thought, I better go to the camera because I'm getting ahead of myself already. But yeah, we've got a rotor bolted onto the front. That one is actually the correct one for the left-hand side of the vehicle. And this one here is the rear, but this is actually for the other side. So that, again, they do need to come off. I was just wanted to make sure they bolted up to the hub and just what the clearances and alignment was like. I couldn't help myself. So anyway, uh, quite a few guys have left comments on things to check with these brakes. So I guess let's just jump straight into it now. The most interesting thing to me is gonna be the weights. So let's start with weighing everything. I have a scale here, which we will just zero out. And what I'll probably do, I'll weigh each individual component for a comparison, and then we'll weigh the complete rear setup. So bolts, brackets, brake lines, everything, caliper. And so we've got a total of everything to compare. I hope that makes sense. Let's just get straight into the weighing. All right guys, so I've got you set up, so hopefully, Get you out of the reflections. You can see the scale figures there. We'll just zero it again. Not that this is an overly expensive and precise piece of measuring equipment, but let's start with the AliExpress front rotor, and it is a whopping, I'm gonna say 12.1 kilos. We'll round it down a little bit. 12.11, yeah, so 12.1 kilos for the AliExpress front rotor. Let's go on to the genuine BMW rotor, which is not brand new. So keep in mind, maybe it's a little bit lighter than it used to be, although it is quite rusty. Okay, the BMW one comes in at 10.8 kilos. Really, that's 10.9, isn't it? 10.88. It's getting rounded up. 10.9 kilos for the standard fronts. Okay, so, I mean, you're talking... 1.2-ish kilos difference there, or heavier for the aftermarket one. And the rear ones are quite heavy when you've got to stretch out. Gee, was that zeroed? Yep, they're zeroed still. Okay, so the AliExpress rear rotor, and sorry, I'm just writing this down as we go, is 8.71, so we just got 8.7 kilos. And let's check the BMW one. They are 8.38, it's really 8.4. 8.4 kilos for the standard one, so yeah, so 300 grams difference-ish. Interesting, but big difference on the fronts. Now the calipers, the calipers are where I believe there's actually gonna be a bit of an advantage for the aftermarket ones even though they're a bigger caliper. Now the way I've decided to measure the calipers is we're gonna measure the caliper with the bracket. Hopefully it stays there. Very precise. And also the brake line for it, because that's how I'm gonna measure all this stuff on the other one as well. So the full sort of front caliper kit, and I, hopefully you can see it, but it's got all the hardware in there. They are 5.9 kilos for the alley version, 5.96. I'm gonna round it up to six kilos. Six kilos for the alley. Let's check the original one. So that's the original caliper with the brake line and then the original mounting bolts. And obviously you've got all the pads in there as well. So that one comes up at 6.46. It's gonna get rounded up to 6.5. So I mean, half a kilo lighter for the AliExpress caliper, which is a much, much bigger caliper. Now going on to the rears, let me just get the AliExpress one. And hopefully she'll sit on there. And we need a brake line. Okay, so the AliExpress comes in at 4.5 kilos. 
And let's just check the BMW rear one. That's got the hardware, the brake lines, everything on there. And the BMW rear is 4.37. So we're gonna go 4.4, just to make it easier for me to compare. So 0.1 of a kilo, pardon me, lighter in the rear. So it's pretty safe to say that when you account for all of the extra hardware that has to go with this brake kit, there's actually quite a big difference. Um, yeah, I was reading online that a few people thought the Brembo's were lighter, but they were also just comparing caliper to caliper. And if we just compare caliper without the mounting hardware, I should just do it again. So the standard one is 6.3. I know it's got the brake line on, but the rubber hose shouldn't be too heavy. So 6.3, and then just that one is 5.1. So yeah, 1.2 kilos. But I guess this stuff, does add just the bracket and the bolts is nearly a kilo which I guess I definitely hadn't thought about that so you do add a kilo just for that actually let's do it with the brake line yeah close enough to a kilo all right that's kind of interesting now that the weights were going to be the big deal for me um, because I was concerned about how much heavier they were going to be but I've seen people say Maybe they were talking about M3s, that where these kits weren't actually any heavier than the standard brakes, but this is definitely going to be heavier. Um, from this point, unfortunately, I haven't got my bloody vernier calipers back, so I'm going to do some measurements with a tape measure. I'm not going to film it because it's going to be a bit hard to do one-handed, but I'll get all the measurements and then I'll tell you what they are very shortly. Perfect. All right guys, so I have some measurements. First one that we have is the rotor thickness. The AliExpress ones are 34 mil thick on the fronts. The BMW original ones, they are 30 mil. So a four mil upgrade. These are actually just under 30 mil, but there's not that much wear on them. The rear AliExpress ones are 28 mil, and the rear BMW ones are just under 22 mil. So a minimal amount of wear on them. I assume these were originally 22 mil thick. Somebody might be able to confirm. Um, the actual rotor diameters, the AliExpress rotor for the front is 380 millimeters. The BMW one is 348, that's the front rotor. The rear rotor from AliExpress is 355 mil, and the rear BMW rotor is 336 mil. In fact, it was just under, but it's getting a bit manky on the edge. See all that rust coming off? So it might be 335. I've, Put it down as 3.36. Okay, now something that is quite interesting and it's gonna show really the big difference, the pad sizes. And hopefully you can see in there, sorry, as the camera wakes up. But yeah, the pads are obviously a semicircular shape or they follow the contours of the rotor. Now the front pad, where are we, where are we? The front pad, from the very outer edge to the outer edge, so the widest point you can measure is 185 mil, and then it is in the, the middle section, so right across the middle, the bit that will actually be contact, contacting the rotor, is 56 mil, and they're 18 millimeters thick, those pads. That in comparison to the BMW, that one at its widest distance is 115 mil, and it's measured top to bottom around 63, but it's a bit hard to get in there. So take that with a grain of salt, and these are 15 mil thick. It does, just interestingly, the pad on the piston side, which is that pad up there, is definitely worn a lot more than this pad. Um, so yeah, the actual contact area on the AliExpress brakes is huge on the fronts in particular, but the rear is actually a pretty similar story. These are actually not a full semicircular shape. They cut them off straight at the edges, but from edge to edge, they are 130 mil. So they're actually bigger than the front pads on the genuine front calipers. And from top to bottom, they are 48 mil. And again, they're 18 mil thick. These dinky little things that are the standard ones on the rear, they are 80 mil at full width, 55 mil from top to bottom. So they're actually taller so the contact area 
on the BMW disc, this section here is actually bigger than the section on the Alley disc. Um, but yeah, long story short, and 13 mil there. So a much, much smaller pad, although it is contacting a taller part of the, uh, the disc. I wish I knew the science behind how all this is gonna work out. Now, the other thing somebody else asked me to check, which I have done off camera as well, are the number of veins, the cooling veins are in the discs. Uh, actually, you can probably see it better just there. They basically run and they help cool the, the surface of the disc. Uh, I can't remember if I've said it in any of the videos, but the big benefit with the real brake kits, because you've got so much more metal there, it will disperse the heat so much faster than what you get with the, the smaller discs. And that's generally why they don't fade so quickly on track. The heat can get out of the disc much faster. And these extra veins help increase the airflow to help that process all happen. And of course, being a two-piece rotor as well keeps the heat away from the bearings. Anyway, uh, let me get back into the numbers. So the AliExpress ones, they have on the front rotors 48 cooling veins. That's all the way around. The genuine BMW rotor has 40 cooling veins on the front. The rears, interestingly, and funnily enough, they painted these a different color with the anti-corrosion stuff, but the rear, that one actually has, this is the alley one, has 64 cooling veins in it. And you can see the holes are much, much closer together. Where the BMW rear, it's actually got more than the front as well. It has, oh no, same as the front, 40 veins. So these ones have 40 cooling veins in them. Kind of interesting. The, the bigger brakes do have more veins. Again, that's more metal in the disc, which is gonna help disperse the heat a lot better. So sorry for the weird camera angle switch, but somebody actually asked about finding out what material the pistons are made from. And it's very hard to get light in there and still be able to see it with the camera. Um, but as you can see there, they are, there's some sort of steel. I can't tell if they're stainless steel that's got a coating on it, or sorry, if they're stainless or if they're steel that's got a coating on it, but it's definitely not aluminium. Um, Aside from hitting it with a pick, I can't really do much else. I don't want to do that yet. I will delve deeply into them if we have any seal failures. Just interestingly on that, you can actually see the Brembo writing on the rubber seals. There's part numbers on them. And then there's also the word Hutchinson. So if anybody knows what that means or what that's a copy of, let us know in the comments below. But I do think it's a bit shit how they've painted the rubber seals. Maybe they do that on the genuine ones. Who knows? But that is really heavy when you hold it for a long time. Um, sorry guys, two seconds. Put that back in there. Yes, yeah, so that's a quick look at the pistons. Um, unfortunately, again, I haven't got my bloody vernier calipers, so I can't measure the piston diameters to confirm they are what they say they are. But I'm sort of at the point where I'm just ready to chuck it on and see how the car drives. Uh, something I have noticed today, the brake lines they've supplied are both the same front and rear. There's no difference between the brake lines which the original ones, obviously the front's about the right length from what they've supplied and the rear's much, much shorter. I should be able to make that work, but it's a bit shit. I will email them and just see what they have to say about that. I reckon they're just gonna say, just use them. Uh, something that somebody mentioned on the first video and I hadn't really spoken about it anywhere, the rear rotor has got the hat designed for a handbrake. So the handbrake will actually work all fine. And I measured that bit in there, that diameter across there with this one before I slid that one on the back and it is actually exactly the same. So these rotors are definitely made correctly for this handbrake setup. Guys, I think it's about time. I've got to take that off and we'll start trying to mount it up. Okay, guys, I nearly forgot to mention, somebody actually did ask if the veins are uh, directional and they are. These rotors are sided left and right. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't actually notice that when I unboxed them the other day. Um, so it is a good thing to know that they do have directional veins. Um, the other thing somebody else wanted to check, which I would also like to check, but I guess I'll find out once they're on the car, was the actual run out on the disc to see if they were wavy or how accurate the machine work is. Unfortunately, I haven't got a dial gauge and there's no way I can accurately measure if there is any run out. Um, even turning it like this, you get movement in the suspension bushes, which you can sort of see playing apart. But I've tried to measure it from the uh, strut, um, not with a tape measure, but I set up a piece of metal that was clamped to that and it, you just can't see anything accurately enough without a dial gauge. So I do apologize about that, but we will find out about the run out once they're on the car and we'll soon find out if they've got any vibrations. All right, I'm gonna take it off and Perfect. start fitting the caliper up. 
Okay, so I'm not even actually sure which way this bracket goes around, but basically what I want to try and do now is just check that the caliper sits about where it should sit and that it lines up with the disc, mainly. So it's all going to be finger tight for now. And we'll just see also if we have to do any trimming of the dust shield, or heat shield, whatever it is. Cool. So that is on there pretty good and proper. And I was going to put the caliper on. Actually, I will put the caliper on first because we'll see if we need to trim the dust shield that way. And... Okay, well, with that sitting where it's going to sit, there's plenty of clearance to the dust shield. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, I wasn't sure if the caliper was going to come over or sit in a funny place. So we might not actually have to trim anything. Let's get the, uh, let's get the disc on and see if it all lines up. And my God, it does weigh a ton. Okay. Oy. Oh, God. Need another hand. Okay, that should be on. We're gonna probably we're gonna take it all off again anyway. But let's see how close it is to uh, fitting. So I might have got the caliper on the right way. <gasps> I think it fits. Who would have thought? I'll just get an Allen key to crank that down with. So that is, caliper's on, and you can see the curvature follows the hat pretty well, so it's definitely positioned correctly that way. And hopefully there's enough light in here. Let me get some, let me get some more light. Sorry guys. So you can see in there, the edge of the rotor sort of lines up perfectly with the, the outer edge of the pads. So that, Bracket is made pretty well. I'd say that's fine. Oh my god, it looks fucking sick. Pardon my French. So I just repositioned the caliper because you've got maybe half a mil of movement around the bolts, which I don't know if that's normal for the original Brembos, but these ones you can definitely move the caliper a little bit. Um, and it's aligned pretty good. The only thing I haven't done yet, which I do need to do, I haven't actually properly cleaned off the wheel hub just to make sure that, that surface is all clean which I will do when I take it off but really in this video I just want to make sure they actually bolt on and they sort of do what they're supposed to do so let's move on to the rear and again I've got to get this cal uh, sorry this rotor off and we'll see if we've got to do any trimming with the heat shield okay so the rear bracket set up I'm just tilt you down a little bit hopefully the light is in there uh, is going to require some trimming to get around the dust shield so hopefully you can just see the two mounting points down in there and yeah, this can't actually get anywhere near them. So it looks like we're gonna have to do some trimming on this piece. So I'll work that out and I'll give you guys an update once it's finished. All right, so I've trimmed away, okay, I've hacked away the heat shield. Um, and unfortunately, that is as far in as that bracket will go. 
And I don't know if you can see there on the GoPro, but we're still about two mil, maybe three mil too far that way. It needs to go three mil that way to line up with the bolt holes, which, I mean, I could probably trim away some material. You can actually see, hopefully you can see there, there's that little section on the corner there where it's actually hitting up on the um, hub of the car. The other issue that we have encountered, so this rear kit is not gonna fit, uh, is the bolts are the wrong size. So they're the bolts that are supplied. They screw into the, the brackets. Trust me, they screw into the brackets. See, there you go. Um, where these are the ones that actually bolt into the hub on the car and a much, much smaller diameter. Not gonna work. So guys, I'm probably gonna end this video off here. Uh, it's just coming up to five o'clock, so I'm gonna email China. Um, <laughs> Just see what they have to say, see if they've got any idea, see if it's just something as simple as they've sent the wrong brackets, um, which makes sense because we've got the wrong rear brake lines and the wrong rear brackets. Hey, this is the joys of paying not enough money for things. All right, um, the only thing that I did want to get done in this video for what was commented below is trying an 18 inch wheel on there, which I might sneak in just at the very end of this video if I get a chance. But first off, I'm gonna go and send some pictures off to the company I bought them from and just see what they have to say. So if I don't get a chance to do this tonight, um, I will check it in tomorrow's video and I'll probably finish fitting the front brakes tomorrow anyway. Uh, but until then, catch you on the next one. Peace. Oh, and this is why I didn't want to tell people where to get the brakes, because they might not bloody fit and the rears don't. There we go. All right, see you guys.